afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. From the Arcadian Court in downtown Toronto, welcome to the 113th season of the Empire Club of Canada. For those of you just joining us either through our webcast or our podcast, welcome to the meeting. Before our distinguished speaker is introduced, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our head table guests. I would ask that each of you uh, rise to be acknowledged as I call your name. And you know, typically the MC says, hold your applause until everybody stand stood, but we don't do that this year. So clap as much as you possibly can for each of our head table guests. We're doing things different. So first, uh, the Honorable Glenn Thibault, Ontario's Minister of Energy. Mr. Mark Isherwood, Vice President in Franchise Sales, Marketing and Customer Care at Union Gas. <laughs> Mr. Chris Benedetti, Principal at Sussex Strategy and a Director at the Empire Club of Canada. <laughs> Mr. John Peevers, Manager of Investor and Media Relations at Bruce Power. Mr. Tim Smithman, Manager of Government Affairs at Union Gas Limited and the second Vice President of the Empire Club of Canada. <laughs> Ms. Sue Vanderbent, CEO of Home Care Ontario, Director, Empire Club of Canada. <laughs> Mr. Mike Gallagher, Business Manager, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 793, and Chair of the Renewable Energy Alliance of Ontario. And once again, my name is Paul Fogelin. In my day job, I'm the Vice President of the Ontario Retirement Communities Association and your President of the Empire Club Canada this year. Ladies and gentlemen, your head table. Before I introduce our speaker, I do want to acknowledge we have a past president of the club with us today, Mr. John Campion. Where are you, John? And I'd like to personally thank each and every one of you for attending today. This is our largest gathering of the year, so give yourself a hand. So at this podium in 2006, Peter F. Love, who's the former Ontario Chief Energy Con Conservation Officer, had this to say, and I quote, most of us for all our lives have taken electricity for granted. With the flip of one switch, it lights our home cooks our food, and washes our clothes. With the flip of another switch, it powers industry and businesses. Flip still another, and our hospitals care for the sick and bring our children into the world." End quote. In the sphere of provincial political priorities, history shows us that issues like education and health care typically dominate the conversation. Well, it's 2016 and we're doing things differently this year. It's certainly not the case. Energy is the issue of the day. You can't flip on a TV or check your news feed without hearing terms like smart meter, off-peak hours, and of course, the ubiquitous hydro bills. In fact, a recently released nano survey said hydro is the most important issue for over 20% of Ontario voters, eclipsing perennial priorities healthcare at 15% and jobs in the economy at 10%. So in light of this, we are truly privileged today to have with us in this time in history the man closest to the issue that matters the most to Ontarians. Minister Glenn Thibault brings a strong sense of con consumer interests and a unique northern perspective to the portfolio of energy minister. And although he's relatively new, the minister has already made it a priority to protect ratepayer interests, including taking action by removing the HST, HST from consumer hydro bills. Minister Thibault faces the ambitious challenge of reducing hydro costs while simultaneously implementing the province's climate change action plan along with his colleagues. The minister is currently traveling the province consulting Ontarians on the long-term energy plan. So now is an ideal time to hear not only about the challenges, but the exciting new opportunities before us to shape how we use energy and realize advancements in technology and innovation in the sector. Glenn Thibault was first elected to the Ontario Legislature in 2015 as the MPP for Sudbury. Before entering provincial politics, Thibault was the MP for Sudbury. He's a strong advocate for supports for persons with de developmental disabilities, 
and for quality services for families struggling with autism. As the director of the United Way, he led many successful campaigns in support of community development. He's also been a volunteer with Big Brothers and Big Sisters, as well as with minor hockey and football leagues. Thibault was born and raised in Sudbury and is a graduate of Cambrian College. He lives in Sudbury with his wife Yolanda and two daughters. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in providing a very generous welcome to our guest of honour, Minister Glenn Thibault, Minister of Energy. Thanks, Paul, for that uh, kind introduction, and it was uh, great to be able to sit at a table where we could talk about the Leafs and no one make fun of me, so it was kind of nice. Um, it, it truly is uh, my privilege uh, to address one of Canada's oldest and uh, most versatile speakers' forums, and to be in the same room as, as so many of our province's environmental, business, and, of course, energy leaders. Your dedication to excellence has made Ontario a global trailblazer in innovation and technological advancement. Your leadership is central to an energy system that drives our economy and creates jobs. I also want to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional territories of several Indigenous nations, by showing respect for the long history and many contributions of Indigenous peoples in Ontario, with special acknowledgement of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. It has been just over five months since I was appointed Ontario's new Minister of Energy, and after many months of meetings, tours of generating stations, a visit to the Grid Control Centre, um, policy briefings, Indigenous engagements, cabinet meetings, and conversations with everyday Ontarians, I've really come to respect the enormous complexity of the energy and electricity system in Ontario. I'm impressed with the level of hard work and innovation that is occurring each and every day in this sector. The research and development that's improving the strength and reliability of our system is remarkable. As many of you know, Ontario is home to many innovative thinkers and actors in the energy sector. We really do have so much to be proud of. But as we look to the next decade, we need to ask ourselves some fundamental questions. How will distributed generation, net metering, increased electrification, storage technologies, and enhanced intergovernmental coordination on carbon pricing come to impact the electricity system in the coming decades? Those are the questions this industry will be challenged with on the road ahead. But with challenge comes opportunity. The opportunity to innovate. The opportunity to find value for ratepayers and shareholders alike. The opportunity to evolve and adapt our electricity system to deliver new products and services that customers, homeowners, as well as the industry expect. I truly believe that we are on the cusp of great change for Canada's energy systems, and I'm excited about what the future will bring. With the release of the ISO's first Ontario planning outlook, the OPO, in September, we know that Ontario will be in a robust electricity supply situation for the years ahead. The Ministry of Energy is presently in the midst of one of the most comprehensive public consultations Ontario has ever run, seeking feedback from stakeholders and communities towards a renewed long-term energy plan. And so, I'd like to spend my time with you this afternoon sharing some of the early thoughts, ideas and learnings from the consultations and conversations happening across the province and give you a sense of what I think the future holds. To begin, it is clear to me that the nature and style of our procurement model needs review. Upon taking this office, I was interested to learn that our previous procurements were essentially segmented into technology-specific allotments. In this day and age, with the level of innovation, pace of technological change, as well as the clear benefit to ratepayers from competitively procured resources, it is essential that we begin moving towards more technology agnostic procurements. Too often, we have sought to impose strict requirements on the system operator. Rather, as we seek to undertake future procurements, we should be focused on outcomes rather than contracting with specific technologies. Moving to become technology agnostic 
will provide new opportunities for innovation and modernization. We must unleash the electricity sector and our system operator to find the appropriate mix to fulfill a capacity auction that would ensure ratepayers receive the best possible prices. Adopting this kind of approach will allow government policymakers to set high-level principles and priorities such as carbon neutrality and avoid forcing specific supply mix choices. It is without question that our government values the clean, green, renewable energy sector and the contribution that firms have made to our domestic economy and job creation. Thank you. But allocating the precise mix of technology types has largely been arbitrary and led to suboptimal sightings, uncompetitive prices, and heightened community concern. What's more, I recognize that with the pace of technological change happening today, future capacity needs can and will be met by competitively priced innovations like demand response, storage, and other conservation programs. Adopting a technology neutral stance will allow the ISO to take advantage of cutting edge innovations and engineering solutions that Ontario firms are engaged in today. It will help them make the leap to become global energy and electricity players. Adopting a technology neutral stance will also allow Ontario to fully optimize existing resources. We have invested in a significant array of wind, solar, natural gas and hydroelectricity resources which represents billions of dollars in invested capital across the province. As the contracts for these facilities come to an end, they will help form the foundation of a new competitive market. Now, as we begin to build the blueprints for the new energy future in Ontario, the Ministry of Energy and our partner agencies recognize that we have a heck of a long way to go in creating this new adaptive market. And we will be looking to work with each of you to get it done. This brings me to my second key observation to share with you today. The overarching need for wholesale market renewal. Ontario's hybrid electricity sector contains a mix of competitive, contracted and even rate regulated generation resources. With the vast majority of our supply mix secured, we acknowledge that future capacity procurements will be seeking to secure supply on the margins. Ontario's current market mechanisms served our province well for years, but they have not kept pace with our evolving supply mix, nor has it kept pace with our neighbours. The time is right for changes to ISO's wholesale market, with a period of robust supply ahead of us and a growing global movement towards a low carbon economy. So to that end, the ISO has already started their stakeholder engagement strategy on market renewal. The success of this market evolution hinges on your participation, on your advice, and on your expertise. Many of you participated in similar energy markets across the globe and can help the Ministry of Energy ensure that even as we evolve our market, we recognize the unique characteristics of the Ontario system, always with an eye on reducing costs and ensuring a robust supply of clean power. We will not be able to implement a carbon copy of the electricity market that exists today in the PJM or in California or in New York, but rather we will evolve our market while paying close attention to local needs and policy objectives with a made in Ontario approach. Market participants that have become used to a particular style or format of contracting will need to evolve their thinking. But those are challenges that require collaborative solutions, not obstacles that create insurmountable barriers to implementation. If appropriately designed, an adaptive energy market has the power to remove inefficiency from the existing market, offer increased transparency to generators, enhance the opportunity for innovative new entrants, and most importantly for our government, help drive the competitive tension necessary to reduce electricity costs. In fact, 
A 2014 study by the ISO indicated that by evolving our procurement methods to a capacity auction mechanism could provide about $300 million in annual savings. And we've seen that success in other markets, jurisdictions who have made the sort of market transition that we are envisioning have achieved upwards of 8% in savings and production costs, directly reducing the monthly bills of consumers. I see this reform as another key action that our government will support to remove costs from the electricity system in both the short and in the long term. Over the past several years, both my predecessor and I have focused closely on the need to root out unnecessary costs and drive down prices for consumers wherever possible. From the renegotiation of the Samsung Agreement to the Fit Prices Review to the recent suspension of the LRP2 and the announcement of an electricity trade agreement with Quebec, we have seen a measurable reduction in prices for consumers and system costs. The ISO's Market Renewal Working Group is hard at it and will be providing the Ministry of Energy with a more complete benefits case in early 2017. But I want to be clear. My point here this afternoon is to add my voice and that of our government to this important undertaking. Not only must we endorse the goals of market renewal, but embrace them as the effective next steps in Ontario's wholesale market evolution and a key driver of cost containment in this sector. This reform will play a key part of achieving the goal of continued bending in the cost curve. Finally, the third core focus that I'd like to discuss today for the upcoming long-term energy plan is the need for the empowerment of consumers in Ontario's electricity system. Driven by the introduction of new disruptive technologies as well as increased customer awareness, the traditional electricity utilities customer commodity dynamic is poised for a major and a needed upheaval. In fact, looking at current trends, consumers will demand it. Now, I'm not telling anyone in this room anything that you don't already know, but we must acknowledge that consumers are expecting a higher degree of functionality and product offerings across all sectors, or sooner or later, the electricity utility must develop to keep pace. As we consider the impact of net metering, personal home storage, and increased electric vehicle penetration into the marketplace, the traditional poles and wires business will need to adapt to offer better products to those customers. And those who do not ought to face increased competition from new entrants, nimble service providers, and perhaps even other LDCs. Driven by these customer demands, a fundamental rethink of the core regulated business will also be required. Our smart grid, our regulators, and our utilities should work together to enable alternative pricing plans for customers of various circumstances. In this day and age, it's hard to believe that the young professional condo dweller in Mississauga is on the same pricing plan as the retired couple living in a bungalow in Sudbury. That's really quite astounding. These consumers can opt in for different telephone, cable, and internet services tailored to their personal circumstances and preferences, and yet they remain effectively on the same retail price plan for home electricity consumption. Certainly, there will always be fixed costs that need to be taken into account to maintain a reliable system, and we cannot rush forward, potentially stranding customers and assets in precarious circumstances. But much like the telecommunication utilities that they were facing uh, with similar headwinds in the mid-1980s, electrical utilities the world over have tremendous opportunity to change, adapt, and offer new and exciting products and services to meet the unique needs of their customers. While certainly existing local distribution companies will have an inherent advantage over new entrants, the system as it stands today should not be considered sacrosanct. New entrants and competitive tension ought to be encouraged and rewarded, not stifled or excluded. Throughout all of this, the leadership of the Ontario Energy Board will be essential to managing this evolution. Innovation must be incentivized and new regulatory mechanisms considered 
But at no point can we ignore the care and protection of customers. That's why I'm pleased the OEB has already launched their regulated price plan roadmap project to work with utilities and new entrants to set out the regulatory regime, regime of the future. Pricing pilots are being encouraged and will be in the market next year. With outcomes focused on developing a more adaptive and nimble regulatory vehicle for the years ahead. Much like the work the ISO will undertake pertaining to market renewal, the OEB will need the sector's advice, support, and ideas to ensure that the RPP roadmap project is a success. Ontario's electricity sector is at an inflection point, and as a sector, we are being challenged with fundamental questions. We can continue to procure capacity using systems designed in a previous century, or we can adapt to meet the dynamic needs of the future. We can cling to a decades-old utility model, or we can offer consumers the exciting new products and services they expect and deserve. We can embrace change, and at the same time, take care to preserve the strengths of Ontario's system. But we must acknowledge that this evolution will be disruptive and dynamic in its process. Just over five months ago, Premier Wynne provided me with the incredible and formidable challenge to serve as Ontario's new Minister of Energy. As I have grown to understand this portfolio and the important role that each of you play in Ontario's electricity sector, I'm even more excited today than I was the day the Premier called me to invite me to join her cabinet. I'm excited about the opportunity that we face building the 2017 Long-Term Energy Plan. I'm excited to set the framework for a renewed and reformed market with enhanced competitive procurements. And I'm actually excited at the opportunity we have to enable enhanced end customer engagement and choice. Many of you have spent a lifetime, your careers in the energy or electricity sector. You've seen change and you've adapted before. And while the pace and scope of change that we are embarking on may be different today, driven by new technologies and ideas, it will fundamentally come down to our ability to work together. Collaboration, communication, and consultation will define our approach. But changes are coming, and we need to work together to get this right. Thank you, everyone, for your attention, and thank you for letting me speak to you this afternoon. It's my pleasure to ask Mr. Mark Isherwood to join me at the podium to thank our esteemed speaker. On behalf of Union Gas and everybody gathered here today, I'd like to thank Minister Thibault for his remarks today. We clearly have a better appreciation for the challenges and opportunities that we have going forward. We thank you for sharing your key areas of focus, and I think we all agree we're at a, a critical point of inflection. It's been a, a pleasure to get to know you better since you've been appointed and named, I guess, Energy, uh, energy Minister uh, this past June, and I'm sure you'd agree that the portfolio can be very challenging at times. Just a little challenging, but uh, it's an area that we're all in this room deeply, uh, deeply interested in. We found that you approach your job with an open mind and great understanding of energy, and specifically the need for affordable energy as it contributes towards economic growth and also the quality of life in communities across Ontario. I'm sure much of that understanding comes from you being a northerner, where the topic of energy is a common dinnertime topic in most, most family homes. Minister, we want you to know that Union Gas will continue to offer you our support and our best counsel as you and your ministry help Ontario go towards a low carbon future. We know that our people and our, future and our energy solutions we deliver have an important role to play in the future. We look forward to making that a reality with your, uh, your ministry. So thank you again for your comments. Uh, once again, I want to give a sincere thank you to Union Gas as our lead uh, sponsor for the event as well as Bruce Power, our secondary sponsor, and the Renewable Energy Alliance of Ontario as our VIP sponsor. Without sponsors, we just simply couldn't hold lunches like this. It's a not-for-profit club, and we really rely on our sponsors. So please join me in giving them up.
We would also like to thank MediaEvents.ca, Canada's online event space, for live webcasting today's event on Facebook and on our website to thousands of viewers around the world. And although our club has been around since 1903, we've moved into the 21st century and we're active on social media. So please follow us uh, on Twitter, Instagram, or check us out at our website at www.empireclub.org. Uh, finally, please join us on January 5th. We're having our annual investment outlook lunch at the Royal York. It's an annual event. It's always one of the most uh, look forward to of the season. And thank you once again for coming today. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.